Now, welcome to another lightning response video, where this time the question comes to us from Zachary Clark, who asked, Hey Thor, I was re-watching the first Iron Man film and couldn't help but think, how did Marvel lose its way? Just in that first film, they took time to build up Tony Stark as a character, showing him mess up and learn from his mistakes, grappling with moral questions, and the way all the supporting characters contributed to the overall story was excellent. But now so many Marvel shows tend to feel bland. Why do you think that is? Is there something missing or are we just oversaturated with superhero films? And do you think there's any similarities to the problems Star Wars is dealing with? Okay, so I think there are a few different factors at play here. And I do think oversaturation or superhero fatigue is absolutely one of them. I think there's just too many superhero movies and shows coming out these days. And they all just start kind of blurring together in a way or looking like the same thing over and over again or in a slightly shinier package than we got before. I mean, I know it's not the MCU, but look at the upcoming DC film Blue Beetle, for example. Early box office projections are pretty horrible for it. And the few people I've talked to about it seem to say it looks like little more than an Iron Man meets Spider-Man kind of ripoff. Which I'm not saying that's what it is. Honestly, I'm not personally very familiar with Blue Beetle. But it's the vibe apparently some are getting from it. And so is that something you want to, if you have a family, is that something you want to spend maybe upwards of $50 to go and see? But getting back to Marvel and the MCU, I think somewhere along the way, probably or certainly, I should say, in Phase 4 when we started to get Disney Plus shows on top of the movies. That was when, for a lot of people, even some of the more hardcore fans of the MCU... That's when keeping up with everything started to feel more and more like a chore, and one that was becoming less and less rewarding. That's when I, at least, someone who had been on board with the MCU since day one, who had seen every single MCU film in the theater up until Ant-Man Quantumania broke my streak, that's when the question started to pop in my head while watching something like Moon Knight, for example. Something that wasn't horrible, but wasn't all that great. That's when I started to ask, do I really need... To watch this? Am I watching this because I actually want to watch it? Or am I watching it because once upon a time I enjoyed most everything in the MCU and always saw a point to what I was watching? Because through the first three phases leading up to Infinity War and then culminating in Endgame, you could certainly see and feel this trajectory that the overarching story was on. You could feel this build up to something much, much bigger, a tension to it all, if you will. And every new movie, though certainly something you could still watch stand alone and enjoy as it is, but it also felt like it was giving you another small piece of a much larger puzzle, like it added something important for you to place in there and get excited about as we move forward. But that's simply not happening anymore. Phase 4 and 5 thus far have brought in so many new characters and left plot threads just hanging all over the place. And so you start to feel not necessarily overwhelmed by it all, but like there's no real focus anymore, no real care about the bigger picture. Certainly not like there was when Thanos was this ominous looming threat on the horizon. I mean, if I hadn't been explicitly told out of story that Kang is the new big thing coming, if I didn't know about Kang in the comic books too, I'm not sure I'd see much cohesion at all with anything they're doing with him or the shows and movies in general. And even knowing that he is the next big bad guy isn't getting me all that interested or excited for him because I feel like we're basically doing the same thing all over again. And the last time we did this, the last time we built to something, it was done much better and with more interesting characters. Right now the MCU just feels like a bunch of random independent stories and characters doing their own thing. Which, yeah, it would still work and be just fine if those stories, if the movies and shows, were great in and of themselves. But they're all too often not. Many of the Disney plus Marvel shows in particular have been not so good. In fact, I don't know that I've really found any of them to be truly great thus far. With a few of them actually being downright bad, including the most recent one, Secret Invasion. To me, that series was the epitome of the saying, content for the sake of content. And yeah, it's starting to feel like, or has for a while now, like, a lot of these new shows and movies are made simply for the sake of churning stuff out because they know it will be consumed. They are getting lazy, to put it mildly. They are resting on their laurels, if you will. They know that they have the brand fully established now, embedded into pop culture, and many out there are essentially programmed to go and see it because they simply have to go see the new Marvel stuff when it comes out. And I know that because, as I was kind of alluding to before, I was once basically in that camp. I get why some have this almost addiction or need to go and see the new stuff, especially the longer you've been doing it. 
the longer you've been a fan of all this. You don't want to feel like or come to the realization that you've been devoted to the MCU for 15 years, that you've put all this time, love, and energy into it, only to realize that what it once was is now gone, that it's no longer this thing that you enjoyed so much. And some simply will not allow themselves to ever come to that conclusion. They consume without question because that's what a good fan does in their mind. And also, since Marvel is still, for better or worse, it is still the it thing. It again is such a huge part of pop culture today, and they want to be a part of that. A part of the flock, you could say. And so they just keep consuming without thought or tolerance of criticism. Now sure, I think there are less and less of them all the time. I think many have been falling off the bandwagon lately, but there are still plenty out there, holding on as tightly as they can. Plenty who think being critical means you're trying to ruin their enjoyment of it, or the enjoyment of others. And they take it upon themselves to do the noble act of defending it from unwarranted criticism. I think the more we have people who do criticize it, the more you only embolden them to defend it. And to them, it couldn't be that you, the criticizer, simply wants or wishes that this content that they are producing was better because you're a paying customer who also cares a great deal about the given property, be that Marvel, Star Wars, or whatever else it might be. You're instead, to them, only doing it because you are toxic, or you're just a horrible person to begin with, or even an ungrateful one. I hear that all the time about Star Wars, that I should just be grateful that Lucasfilm and Disney are giving us new content at all, as if we don't have to pay for it, that it is just given free, and that they're doing it at regular intervals. That it's not like the George Lucas era, when new movies were few and far between. That's another one I hear all the time. But what they don't understand, because they do indeed refuse to look at it with any sort of critical eye, they don't want to question their fandom. And so what they don't realize is that I, and I think most fans, and most other fans, would take a few good stories spread out over however long it takes to create them, rather than a steady stream of mediocrity that relies on a name of a brand to sell it more than its actual quality. I mean, when you do indeed go back to that first Iron Man movie 15 years ago, as the comment pointed out at the start, now sure, the superhero genre in general in 2008 was doing pretty well at the time, but still, many people had no clue who the hell Tony Stark and Iron Man were. And that MCU moniker hadn't become a thing yet. That movie didn't have the branding to fall back on to rely on it automatically getting a good deal of people in the theater, like newer MCU films do. And so, and this is the real key, this is the crux to the whole problem with Marvel these days, I think. But before anything and everything else, Iron Man had to actually be a good movie not just the next piece of average MCU content for the masses to consume. If it's not a good movie, if it doesn't start us off well in the MCU, we're not here today talking about it. Which is why I think the MCU is struggling overall. It's forgot how to create good stories with interesting characters that both stand on their own and also contribute in a meaningful way to something bigger down the road. It now really is just content for the sake of keeping the wheels on this thing churning. The next piece of it on a long and windy road to nowhere. Or to fighting Kang and trying to save the multiverse. Which is another sort of, I guess you could call it, issue or mistake potentially. I feel like when you start getting into stakes that are too big, like saving all of reality itself essentially is, you kind of lose something personal. I go back to the first Avengers movie and literally seeing the average person on the street fearful for their lives and trying to survive an alien invasion of New York City. Yes, it's a crazy scenario, but the way it's presented still makes it a relatable one because you see the people that the Avengers are trying to save, and you understand what happens on the whole to Earth if they fail. The average person can grasp the concept of aliens trying to take over New York and then the world but I'm not so sure that implies to Kang and his motivations. He's trying to do whatever he wants to do or to the multiverse. I don't think that the average person truly understands what's going on there or what that even means when you say multiverse. But anyway, to wrap this up, oversaturation of the superhero genre is certainly an issue. There's just too much superhero stuff for the average person to keep up with or want to keep up with. And then once you stop trying to keep up with it and realize you're not really missing a whole lot, you then also realize there's not much of a reason to jump back in in order to keep close tabs on it anymore. Also, the new stories and characters feel generic. It feels like we've been there and done that with most of the new shows and movies. Like, again, they're getting kind of lazy and just doing the same thing and putting a new package on it. 
And I don't know how you fix that. I don't know how you make the MCU truly exciting again for those who have seen behind the curtain and realize Disney is back there trying to just ride this thing out as long as they can and make as much money on it as they possibly can. Maybe something like the X-Men coming to the MCU will pump new life into it for a while. Who knows? All I do know, though, is that the age of the superhero or superhero movie is likely coming to an end in the not-too-distant future. And I'm not saying the MCU is going to die off entirely, that we won't be getting new superhero movies 10, 15, 20 years down the road, or that the new DC universe that's about to start won't make a splash. But unless they find a way to focus on telling great stories first and foremost again, more and more people are going to wake up and stop caring, and eventually less and less of these films will be made, which is probably a good thing. Well, that's going to be all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to weigh in and tell me what you think about all this. Is the MCU dying? Is the age of the superhero dying? And if so, why do you think that's happening? Whatever you think, leave your comments below and let's talk some Marvel. And until next time, thanks for watching.